Hello there. Welcome back to the booth here at the World Championship. That is Paul Cheon. That's Luis Scott Vargas. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe, and we are excited to bring you coverage here today of the finals. It has all come down to this gentleman. Two players left in the field, a William Huey Jensen and a Javier Dominguez. They are the last ones. We're playing for $100,000. Now, second place gets 50000 not bad. Not too shabby. So they've got something to play for here. $50,000 is the difference. This is probably the biggest, you know, difference in monetary prices for Magic Tournament ever. This is certainly the biggest payout we've ever had as well. Yeah, super exciting. The first time we've given away six figures to first place. This is big. I think, I believe William Jensen going first. I think that's one of the most important parts of the matchup. And I talked about it before. World of Virtuoso, I think, is one of the most important cards here. All right, looks like we're underway here on the first turn. Let's get going. William Huey Jensen, Javier Dominguez, we're, we're playing best three <laughs> out of five. And a quick start here for Javier. And look at that hand by William Jensen. He's got the Magma Spray for the earlier interaction. He's got the Harness Light, and he's two copies of Whirler Virtuoso. This is about the ideal hand. Like, if, if Huey could just pick his hand, right. he, he maybe would put, put a Spire Bluff Canal, so a Rootbound Crag, just to get the turn one Magma Spray. But the fact that he's be able to interact on turn two and play Virtuoso Virtuoso with another piece of interaction, the only card he could really lose to out of this hand is, like, Unopposed Hazard. Right. Great start here for Jensen. He surveys the scene. Harness Lightning, certainly in hand for him. So... Yeah, it looks like Javier Dominguez has another Soul Scar Mage to play here. And William Jensen did have the opportunity to play a Magma Spray, but actually Javier Dominguez is opting not to play a second copy of Soul Scar Mage here and instead leaving up a removal effect in the form of either Shock or Lightning Strike. I think this is a pretty heads up play by Javier. You know, he, he does recognize that World of Virtuoso is one of the more problematic cards in the matchup. So I think what he wanted to do here is if William Jensen played a turn three World of Virtuoso, energy on the stack, Javier Dominguez casts a Lightning Strike or an Abrade to, to make sure that William Jensen can't make a Thopter token. What we've kind of seen here is that because Javier didn't spend mana, mm -hmm. it made Huey less likely to spend mana. Both players, it's kind of like a standoff where they don't, they, they both understand what the other could play, are respecting it, and are not tapping out in response. All right, well, looks like Jensen has finally decided to go ahead and fire off that Harness Lightning on the Soul Scar Mage, though nothing on the battlefield now for Dominguez and Jensen at a nice 17 life as he resolves a Whirler Virtuoso. And here we go. This is, this is, you know, energy trigger on the stack. Javier Dominguez using that abrade to get that Whirler Virtue off the board. And th th this was perfect. Now he drew a Bowman Curry, and there is no Thopter on the battlefield. But once again, uh, Jensen at the ready with Magma Spray. In, I think that Jensen was aware that an abrade is probably going to hit his Whirler Virtuoso, but because he has the second one, he's a lot more willing to, to spend the first one and just get the energy and, and not really lose out on the exchange. Wow, this was huge. He actually drew a Long Tusk Cub, and, you know, the red that can deal damage in chunks of three, but that Long Tusk Cub has a potential to be a 4-4, four four, so that was a huge draw from William Jensen. Could be a runaway Long Tusk Cub here for William Jensen. We've seen him do that earlier in the weekend. An unopposed Cub can go the distance, though there is a Soul Scar Mage now yep. for Javier Dominguez that could change that equation. Yeah, so w uh, one nice thing here is that Javier Dominguez does have access to some burn spells in hand. He's got a Shock and a Lightning Strike. He can use that to kind of whittled down the Long Tusk Cup. He didn't do it on the main phase because William Jensen could have then responded by using a Burn Spell on the Soul Scar Mage. And if he did that, then the, the Soul Scar Mage's unique ability to put minus one, minus one counters gets nullified because it would no longer be on the battlefield. That ability comes up more often than you may think. Right. Okay, here comes Long Tusk Cub hitting the red zone. Currently just attacking for two, but as we've mentioned, there's some energy in the bank there that could change that equation. No boxes, no boxes. Pump once. Jensen says, I'd like to pump this Long Tusk Cub one time. We've seen Huey be very aggressive with Long Tusk Cub. When we saw him play against Kelvin Chu uh, last round, he, he pumped almost every time he could. He, mm -hmm. he does not really believe in stockpiling energy. He just goes for a throw. Right, but going for the fourth uh, toughness here at this juncture would be pretty reckless in the face of a potential lightning strike. So he's going to not do that. Right, and William Jensen does have access to double harness lightning here, so he can opt to kill the Soul Scar Mage in response to any removal spell that Javier might cast. And 
Huey also drew Glorybringer, so he can't even really get flooded this game. Yeah. Like, one of the risks with that opening hand is you draw four land in a row, and all of a sudden you don't have a whole lot of gas, but wow. Huey has all spells he can cast <laughs> minus the Glorybringer. They're all action. And this is just the perfect hand. He just drew he a just Whirler drew Magmus Virtuoso. <laughs> his, his hand is mono. Magma Sprays, Harness Lightnings, and Whirler Virtuosos. Yeah, it's surprising. I actually think you were right that World of Virtuoso is a very good card in this match. <laughs> uh oh, you're surprised that I was right. Is that what you said? Okay, <laughs> cool. Cool, thanks. Uh, I know we shouldn't have put you two so close <laughs> together. <laughs> uh. So Jensen goes into his patented tank mode there, both hands on his foreheads as he thinks about what he wants to do. We well, look at Javier Dominguez right now as well with his third land. This game has, I think, been a lot more difficult for, from Javier's side of the board because he's so constrained on mana. Paul did mention earlier that the red deck can't really get flooded, but sometimes when it's stuck on two or three lands, it actually can run into a bottleneck with all the spells it can cast. And so Huey's content knowing that his, he's got exactly what he needs and knowing as the game goes on he'll get more and more of an advantage. Javier's the one who's behind and trying to figure out a way to get out of this. Yeah, and he's being very careful about how to time his burn spells, but William Jensen is also very aware of that. So we're kind of at a standoff, except Javier Dominguez has a Soul's Car Mage on the battlefield. Meanwhile, William Jensen with a 3-3 Long Tusk Cup with four energy. That's right. He sends it in. It is going to get blocked, and Javier's going to go for it. He's going to fire off a shock here before damage. That's going to do two things. It's going to put potentially two counters on that Long Tusk Cup, but also trigger prowess. So this is really going to prompt Jensen to act potentially. Yeah, and Harness Lightning in, in response will kill the Soul Scar Mage regardless of uh, whether Javier plays other spells because he already has so much energy built up. The question is, is for William is whether he, he does want to use one of these Harness Lightnings or whether he thinks this combat's going to work out well for him. Yeah, right. It is a little mana inefficient for him as he has a pair of Whirler Virtuosos in hand, right, Paul? Yeah, yeah, and William Jensen currently thinking, okay, Javier is leading out with the shock here. He could have cast it at some point earlier. Does he have a Lightning Strike or an Abraded Hand as well to respond to my Harness Lightning? Now, William Jensen does have a second copy of Harness Lightning in hand, so we can't have this crazy stack war, but Huey opting to just maybe just let the shock resolve you, here. You bumped. bumped once. Yes. Took, took the two counters off. This is Yes. Okay, so what's happened is the shock has resolved, and as a result, the two minus one, minus one counters that it would have put on, again, thanks to Soul Scar Mage, have nullified against the two plus one, plus one counters that Jensen had put on it. He put an additional one on there. Yeah, this is interesting. Now William Jensen has to react because he, he has a long tusk, a 2 2 long tusk cub in the battlefield. That Soul Scar Mage prowess has been triggered. It is a 2 3. That's right. And I I think William used the last two counters, so there's a plus plus one counter pending right now. That's right, and that forces Javier Dominguez now to use Lightning Strike. But again, Jensen says, you know what? This works out just fine for me. That was both a shock and a Lightning Strike to take down my Long Tusk Cub and my <coughs> energy. But in, as a result, though, he gets to cast a Whirler Virtuoso still this turn. And he still got to keep those two Harness Lightnings in hand. That's right. So Jensen... Navigating his way through here, and there she is, Hazareth the Fervent from Javier Domingos. But he's got three cards in hand, so she's not attacking or blocking yep. anytime soon. Jensen's going to cash in three energy for a Thopter. Just to clarify what happened in that Cub situation, there was another plus minus one counter on the stack, yes. and Javier lightning struck the Cub in response, so that never resolved because it was a little ambiguous. And I know people in chat were, were wondering exactly what was happening. Where, where those last two energy went, yeah. yeah. But Javier Dominguez has resolved this, has read, and none of William Jensen's creatures are quite big enough to block it once Javier De Dominguez can empty out his hand. So William Jensen does need to start putting more pressure on as he does want to kind of end the game unless he finds something like a long test cub and gets a lot of energy. And, and critical is, is Javier is running into the problem kind of from earlier where he didn't have enough lands earlier, so now he still has three cards in hand. Hazard's not necessarily going to be able to go anywhere. Let's see what he's working with here. And it's an Ooh, expensive yikes. hand. Expensive. I don't think that there's a really a way for Hazret to attack next turn unless Javier goes land Chandra, add two mana on Carp Crasher. I guess that does it. Yeah, he needs to find a land here to actually be able to attack. He did. Wow. He a Ramanop ruin. So. That was the perfect land too. As it Best was case ruins. That's right. Yeah. Javier really wanted to find a land there, and we're going to see him cast Chandra, likely just go upstairs to make two mana. Add a third to his pool with that mountain and play on crop crasher. That unlocks the power of Hazareth the Fervent. Yeah, 
Uh, William Jensen does have the opportunity here to now fire off a harness landing on the on crop crasher just so he can opt to block if he wants. Which I think he's probably going to do here. Because of Hazard is indestructible, Jensen is now in a position where he, he just has to race. He can't he can't win a, a controlling game here against Hazard unless he draws his, his one copy of Confiscation Coup or one copy of Commit Memory. Well, so, the, the good news is he has some racing tools here available, doesn't he? Definitely. And Glorybringer in particular means that if William can draw an untapped fifth land, play Glorybringer, <laughs> eat Soulscar Mage, can take out Chandra, can do a bunch of damage, It'll, it'll all work out fairly well for Jensen, but Hazaret is unstoppable and, you know, eventually will grind him down. Yeah, keep in mind, William Jensen is still sitting pretty at a 17 life. <laughs> so he can take a couple of hits, at least, from the Hazaret. Yeah, we see, though, that, you know, Javier Dominguez playing this red deck. He's got active Chandra. He has an active Hazaret on the battlefield. This is kind of what he wants to do. Uh, Marshall, I'm curious, who do you think's hand on forehead game is better, Javier or, or William? I think Jensen's had a, a much longer <laughs> run at it, so I'm going to give it to him. But uh, Javier's, a, let's just call him a plucky upstart. <laughs> All right, both in. And remember, it's a 2 3 Soul Scar Mage, thanks to Prowess. I guess Javier just considering whether or not he wants to try and protect the Chandra, but opting, look, I just want to race here. If you want to spend all your resources to getting rid of my Chandra Torch of Defiance, that means I'm just going to be able to continue to attack you, and that Chandra's gained me five life. Chandra was uh, a two mana gain five is really what it came down <laughs> to, because she generated two mana. <laughs> all right, let's see if Jensen can hit that untapped land here for the Glorybringer. No. Instead, he finds himself a Magma Spray off the top of the library, but he still has plays this turn. He can play a Whirler Virtuoso and keep up Magma Spray. Yeah, so what I think he's going to be looking to do here is attack with the Whirler Virtuoso and the Long Tusk Cup, pump, pump it once and get that Chandra off the board. Then he can, he can opt to use that Magma Spray to get the Soul Scar Mage off. Okay, well, there we go. Chandra sent packing here. And main phase is just going to use the Magma Spray to make sure that the Soul Scar Mage goes away. 15, 15. He's only got two energy, though, so he can't actually make a Thopter. Last turn, we saw him cash in a Thopter to soak up five damage from Hazaret. Of course, he doesn't have any form of evasion. Yeah. Bomat Courier was the draw step there for Dominguez, a card that he can just simply cast from his hand. Fairly low impact in this board state, though. Mm -hmm. the, the way isn't clear, and Hazaret is going to continue racing, but, you know, I think at this point, things are actually looking pretty good for Huey. Yeah, Jensen had that really nice opener, and his hand has continued to be pretty good. We know he has the Hasty Dragon there as well. And look at this. Jensen's just going to cash in a Whirler Virtuoso. Not so good in multiples anyway. Yeah, we're just off to the races here. Does Jensen hit an untapped land here for Glorybringer? He did not. Drew, drew a Long Tusk Cub. Okay, another Cub. That does give him access to Long Tusk Cub and keeping up or using Harness Lightning this turn as well. He's going to use it right now. Unfortunately, not going to generate any energy. I think this is going to prompt Javier to throw his second Hazard at, at, at William and then sack the Beaumont Courier to, for no effect. If he doesn't do that, then, then Jensen does net two energy off the deal. Yeah, which is a pretty big deal. That puts him over the, the three barrier, which could be another Thopter, which could be five life. And as is, part of the reason to do this play is that William wants to make sure that Long Tusk Cub connects this turn. Mm -hmm. He can certainly use the energy for Long Tusk Cub, or he can just bank the bonus energy and keep a Thopter at bay here. He's going to do that. So, well, at least he's going to threaten to do that. He's got four energy sitting there in his reserve. Yeah, and uh, Huey playing it slightly, uh, a little bit conservative. He could have added an additional counter to the Long Tusk Cub, but opting to give himself the ability to make a Thopter token in case Javier Dominguez top decks an on crop crasher. Now, Jensen's at 13. Yes, taking five doesn't look super great, but can he? He's, he's more likely to throw away three energy and make a Thopter, I think, than, the, okay. than just take the full hit of five. He could. The red deck does deal damage in increments of two, but it seems like it'd be uh, pretty aggressive to not block here. Oh, wow. he's actually going to keep his energy but get rid of the Long Tusk Cub here on a chunk block. Also not make a Thopter, so he must be lining something up. He finds an Essence Scatter off the top of that Glorybringer still in his hand. And William is putting Javier on a two-turn clock with this attack while having take six five. energy, which allows him to make two Thopters, and he has Essence Scatter to stop something like 
on-car pressure out of Javier's deck. This is starting to look very good for Jensen here in game number one, though Javier's going to do everything he can. Knocks Jensen down to 11, activating Ramanop Ruins on end step, finds himself an Earthshaker Kenra. Yeah, but I think that Essence Scatter means that William, it's going to be really, really difficult for Javier to get in for the full 11 points of damage here. We might see Hazard on defense for the first time this game. <laughs> yep. If that's the case, Huey would be so close, he could actually get Javier to one. If he wanted to make some thopters. But no, Hazaret, yeah, so she came to game. So given that Javier is attacking here, I think this does lock up the game for William Jensen because he has the Essence Scatter for the Earthshaker Kenra. And yes, that's exactly what happens. William Huey Jensen picks up game number one from Javier Dominguez. And he is now just two games away. Take a look at his dad. That's his father. Lives about an hour from here. Came in uh, to root on his son as he's made it now to the finals of the World Championship and given up a game. Oh boy, we've got a lot more action for you. Remember, we're playing best of five here at the World Championship from Boston. Don't you go anywhere. We'll be back right after these messages. Test your skill against your local store community and become store champion this December 30th through 31st. Everyone who plays gets a premium full art rare with top finishers receiving a deck box featuring rivals of Ixalan art. If you win the whole event, you'll get the title of store champion and an exclusive store champion playmat to commemorate your victory. Find a store championship near you at magic.wizards.com slash store champs. The game I fell in love with, I want people to experience in many different possible ways. And one of the things that I want to see is it express itself in, in a, a modern sensibility, in the way that people are playing now. And that part of that is going digital. Like, I love tabletop, and we'll continue to make a tabletop game, but we really want to bring out the best experience, the magic experience, the, the electrifying thing that made me fall in love with the game. We want to have people play that in a digital form.